This is Apple's new HomePod. It's their new smart speaker, which they're billing primarily as a music device rather than a smart assistant like Google Home and Amazon Alexa are. They're saying it has spatial awareness, so it should fill the room with sound in a way that those competitors don't. Um, and I'm not allowed to touch it, nor can I hear it, so I can't actually tell you how good this thing is just yet. But what I can tell you is that it'll be coming out later this year. It's going to cost $349, first released in the US, uh, in the UK, and also Australia. Other countries coming in the new year. But one of the potential downsides is that you need an Apple Music subscription in order to get the full integration. So if you prefer to use Spotify or Pandora, maybe not quite a device for you. But Apple are pretty confident that this is going to give them a good part of the market in this new home assistant space. The name has to grow on me. It just does <laughs> not, it makes a lot of sense, right? And it really speaks to where I think Apple wants to position this device is a speaker first. Is about music. Is the fact that Apple seems to be focusing on the fact it's a, a music device, is it kind of a cover up for Siri not being a very good assistant compared to Google Home compared to Alexa? I, I take your point, and yes, the criticism, you know, as far as how uh, Siri is not as smart as, as Google Assistant, I think that is a fair criticism to make. But I do think it's a different approach and not driven by necessity, but driven by their play in the home. It's just finished a wide-ranging interview with Tim Cook. We're just starting to get the sound out for you now. We started on uh, the newest hardware of the day, and that is the HomePod. He said that this is something that Apple has been working for four years on, multiple years, which means they actually started working on this before the Amazon Echo even came out. Uh, you'll notice that Apple is really focusing on how this can reinvent music in the home, not all of the other potential use cases. And I started off by asking, why should anyone buy this over Amazon Echo or Google Home? Take a listen. Apple's a company that deeply cares about music and wants to deliver a great audio experience in the home. We feel like we reinvented it at, in the portable player area and we think we can reinvent it in the home as well. So I went on, will I be able to make a co phone call with this device? Will I be able to call a car or order groceries? Does this say anything about Apple's e-commerce ambitions? He said not to think about it that way just yet, to really focus on this music use case, but to assume that that is just the beginning. In terms of why did it take so long, the fact that so many people out there are now saying finally, take a listen to what he had to say. For us, it's not about being first, it's about being the best mm -hmm. and uh, giving the user an experience that delights them every time. And, and so I, we don't get, we, we don't let that impatience uh, result in shipping something that's just, just not great. That is a refrain we've heard from Apple before when it's come to other new products. Of course, we also wanted to talk about Tim Cook's relationship with Donald Trump. As we know, uh, Tim Cook called the president last week uh, when there was some confusion about whether or not uh, President Trump would be withdrawing the United States from the Paris Accord. He urged the president to remain uh, part of this landmark agreement, and Trump made a different decision. I asked what that means for Cook's relationship with the president. Take a listen. I think he did listen to me. I, he didn't decide what I wanted him to decide. And uh, I think he decided uh, wrong. I think it's not good, not in the best interest of the United States, what he decided. That said, I asked, you know, why is it worth continuing to work with this administration? Tim Cook made it clear that uh, he believes if you have an opportunity to work with the administration to help the American people, you take that opportunity. You don't walk away from the table. Yet he also made a point to mention that he did not join the president's councils by choice. Take a listen to why. These uh, councils in general and committees to be terribly productive. And... Uh, uh, but but it, it wasn't about not wanting to advise on something where I thought that, um, you know, we could help or we had a point of view that should be heard. And so I'm doing the latter. I, I can't imagine a situation where I wouldn't do the latter because I think it's in the best interest of America to do it. And I am first and foremost an American.